The global supply chain isn't functioning as it normally does, and that's impacting us all around the world and here in the UK. You can't lay bricks, you can't cast concrete slabs, and then it's a knock-on effect for our men, our subcontractors, and of course our clients. We normally have lots of Spider-Man, but this is all we can, we've got, and we can't get any more. Don't know why we can't get any more Spider-Man at the moment. From Spider-Man for kids to semiconductors for cars, there's now a huge gap between supply and demand. The American consumer's buying strength is so strong and epic that we can't absorb all this cargo into the domestic supply chain. That's the boss of the port in Los Angeles. And, well, look at the situation there. Dozens of container ships are waiting to dock. And this has been the knock-on effect. The Wall Street Journal reports Nike doesn't have enough sneakers to sell for the holidays. Costco is reimposing limits on paper towel purchases. Prices for artificial Christmas trees have jumped 25% this season. The global supply chain is struggling. There are several reasons. The first is COVID. This is Claire Jones from the FT speaking as England emerged from its lockdown earlier this year. The reason is we're all sitting at home and rather than spending on things like events, things like eating out, which is what we usually spend most of our disposable income on, we're spending on things instead. The problem is some of those things aren't arriving. COVID has brought surging demand, but also closed factories and labour shortages. And there's another factor too, shipping. 90% of the world's goods are transported on our seas. And this year, we've seen the fragility of that shipping network. The Suez Canal's in Egypt. It's a shortcut from Asia to Europe for cargo ships. And when one ship got stuck in the canal, it caused havoc. What this affair has shown is just how much impact a single event involving one giant vessel can have on the entire global supply chain. That vulnerability from the Ever Given to the pandemic has meant lots of containers in the wrong places. Add in surging demand and the cost of shipping has spiralled. We'd never paid more than £2,700 for a 40-foot container coming to us from China. This morning I was quoted over £15,000 for a similar container. Prices have gone through the roof and it is becoming unworkable. And the rise in the cost of shipping described there plays into broader challenges. In every sector of the timber supply market, prices have gone up, um, supply chains have been less reliable, delivery drivers have been hard to get, so just everything has been difficult. Now in the UK, the driver shortages are in part, though not entirely, connected to Brexit. But the UK is not alone in having labour shortages. Forbes magazine wrote this summer, the economic data is fairly clear. Employers are getting desperate for workers in the US. And those docking delays we saw in Los Angeles, well, staff shortages are one reason that they're happening. Well, that's COVID, shipping and labour shortages. Next is politics, because rebuilding some supply chains in the US and reducing reliance on China is a priority for President Biden. That reliance was particularly acute at the start of the pandemic when countries had shortages of PPE. Here's President Biden on that. We shouldn't have to rely on a foreign country, especially one that doesn't share our interests or our values, in order to protect and provide our people during a national emergency. Providing for the people is President Biden's goal, but supply issues have sometimes got in the way of that. Now, my last point concerns the complexity of how the global supply chain works. Because globalization brought in a system of production known as just-in-time. This system creates savings by only delivering goods to firms when they need them, which is fine until they don't arrive. And we're seeing this now with the auto industry. It uses semiconductor chips. They're a vital component in cars and indeed in many electrical products. But there's been a surge in demand because we're all buying laptops and other electricals. And now there aren't enough chips. Because of this and other part shortages, Toyota has temporarily cut production by 40%. And then this is the head of Vauxhall UK. Well, it's a global problem. Obviously, it's, uh, it's affecting all of, our, all of our industry, all of our competitors. Um, and it's obviously you know, suppressed our ability to manufacture. This is one of so many different ways the global supply chain is making itself felt. It's a reminder that something that can feel distant, like a port or ship or factory in China or the US, connects directly to all of us. And this will continue as Christmas approaches. If you think you're going to go into toy stores in December, as you normally would do um, with Santa's wish list, 
and you're going to get what you want, you will be very disappointed. The issues with the global supply chain have created short-term challenges, but they're also a prompt to consider how we organise our world. Globalisation has made many products possible and affordable, but this isn't just about whether toys arrive for Christmas or if cars can be made on time. The current situation raises deeper questions about the volume of things we make and consume and about how and where we make them.